रोशनी का कारवां दिस पॉडकास्ट इज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय स्कोर फाउंडेशन Hi and welcome to the Purple Highway Conversations. My name is George Abraham and my guest today is uh, Ankur Kankonkar who is an entrepreneur and he is based out of Goa. Welcome uh, Ankur. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks so much Mr. George. So Ankur, uh, you know, you've been visually impaired and it's not a very common thing to see people with vision impairment getting into entrepreneurship and that too in the tech space. Mm. So what actually prompted you to take up this line of work? I lost my sight at around uh, I would say about 18 19 um, when I was about 18 19 when I was doing my bachelor of pharmaceutical sciences. And after that uh there was a period of gap in the middle where I was actually doing nothing and then I decided to you know um start all over again and complete my education so when i was doing my bsc in computer science that is when i actually had decided that you know i want to be an entrepreneur i don't want to like work for a company or you know work for somebody else yeah the major reason i would say is because see i'm i'm a person who is driven by uh, certain values and one of them is like freedom i i like freedom myself yeah Uh, I like independence. I like taking my own decisions, being yeah. my own boss. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, I'm a Gemini. I'm born in June, so I'm a Gemini. Yeah. <laughs> and most Gemini's, I think, are uh, people who like to be their own kind of bosses. Mm. And I've been always like that. You know, leadership is something that I, I would say comes to me naturally. So I, I would like to, you know, lead people rather than follow. I read a story about another blind guy called Kartik Sani. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure you know him. Yes. And he's it's a very uh, you know popular uh, guy in, in especially the visually impaired community. Yeah. Uh I read a story on the internet um that he became one of the first blind guys in India to study science at 12th CBSE, I guess. Yes. He uh, studied Stanford uh you know what is that uh, bachelor of yeah, yeah, BTech at uh, Stanford, BTech at Stanford and yeah. uh, working at Microsoft and today is a very good friend of mine but at the time I did not know him. I just uh, read his story online, and that story kind of you know changed my life. I would say. Moving on, yeah. uh, uh, Ankur, yeah. uh, you set up a company. Yes. So what is this company called, and what does the company actually do? Okay. So uh, the company today is called Kan Konkar Technologies Private Limited. Uh, it was earlier called Caps Lock. It's spelled with a K. Yeah. K A P S L O C K. We still have a brand in the name of Caps Lock. Yeah, the company is called Kan Konkar Technologies Private Limited. Yeah, and we also have another brand called Anklitic X, which deals in like AI analytics and all technology related services. Yeah. So when we first started back in 2019, we were just a web design, uh, web development kind of a company. Today we are more into custom software development, providing IT solutions for businesses, uh, small to medium sized businesses. and we also do as i said you know ai and analytics related services so completely a digital company you can say and our clients are mostly uh, companies who are into the financial sector other tech companies who want to outsource their development and 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 related services um we have clients like you know we started off with clients here in goa we have clients all over india and today we have clients like in the us in 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 norway and also in canada and soon uh, you know we are, we are um, going to have clients in the middle east as well like like dubai and other countries yes, yes. so you don't really come from a uh, an entrepreneurial no. background no. no so i i'd be interested in knowing uh, how did you actually kind of get started because uh, more, many of us want to be entrepreneurs but mm-hmm. do not know where to start and how to start mm-hmm. so would you like to share some of your experience yeah. yes See, after doing my bachelor's in computer science i did a master's degree in information technology yeah and uh, as i said i i had already decided that i was going to be an entrepreneur i wanted to start my own company so i took a couple of friends of mine uh pitched them the idea that you know why not start um an id company since we come from that background right yeah um 
since we were all software engineers, it, it was a, uh, an easy decision to get into an IT services business. Yeah. But, but starting a business for the other two especially was not an easy decision because uh, their parents were not really you know, um, supportive of the idea and all that kind of stuff. But I really convinced them to get, get started with me. Um, so we, we set up uh, um, a proprietary firm back in 2019. Uh, it was a simple proprietary firm um, which we registered under the name of Capswalk. Yeah. Uh, and to get started, I, we, we, we just uh, you know got an MSME registration and a simple trade license from from the uh, municipal council. So it's it's not really you know a huge thing to start a business. You you just need a few licenses here and there. But the most important thing that you need, I, I would say, is your own uh, what do you say belief in yourself that you want to start something. So they, I presume, are still partners with you. Uh, unfortunately, they're not. Uh, they've moved on to do, you know, um, other things. But uh, I've, I've, I've brought my uh, father on, on board as as one of the directors in this new company that I've set up. But we now have a, you know, a, a big enough team which can take care of uh, a lot of op business operations. Uh, I don't really work in the business. I work mostly on the business. Um, basically, being the face of the company, getting uh, new clients, negotiating uh, sales, etc. But we do have a team of engineers who take care, uh, you know, of the day-to-day -day engineering uh, requirements. We do have a marketing team. We do have a business development team, etc. What are some of the key challenges that you had to face, and how did you deal with that? See, as as a blind person, the first challenge I would say is if if, if you're pitching your service to a client, for example. Yeah. And. Um, me being one of the like you know, uh, what do you say, uh, key persons in going and meeting people because the other two uh, co-founders that I had, they were not really comfortable speaking to people. They were more of like engineering or operations kind of people. Yeah. They, they were you know uh, comfortable taking care of the back end side of things, but me being you know pretty good at speaking and all that kind of stuff. So um, I used to go and pitch to clients. So the biggest challenge was people did not take me seriously initially because of my visual impairment. Yeah. Uh, they were like, you're a blind guy, right? How can you, uh, you know, cope with certain demands and certain um, pressures that can come with, with us giving you business? Yes. How can you, how can we even, you know, trust that you would be able to deliver? Yeah. <laughs> but I would say how I cope with it is, you know, I, I really showed them what, what our skill set was and, you know, what we were good at and convinced a few early clients to take a chance with us and you know um, what do you say give us give us that early opportunity and then once we started delivering that's when I think people started uh, getting more confidence okay that you know they have a portfolio now of clients and they can deliver if you know of anyone with vision impairment who needs guidance on living life with blindness please share the Iway National Toll Free Helpline number 1800532046 The number is 1800532046 You know you did mention about AI mm -hmm. in your um, uh, while you were talking about your company to yes. start with then uh, you know these days People are talking about AI, machine language, Internet mm. of Things, mm. and so mm. on. Mm. So, what is the area of AI that you are uh, working in? Yeah, sure. Um, see, what we do as a company with AI is actually help businesses. Yeah. Uh, maybe small to medium-sized businesses, how they can actually implement AI to make their processes automated how they can um, reduce redundancy, how they can reduce manual labor. Yeah. That is where we identify, you know, that these, these, these tasks or these processes can actually be automated using AI, using artificial intelligence. And then we implement uh, AI-based solutions like, I don't know whether people have heard of chatbots. We can implement chatbots for yeah. companies where, you know, you don't need a person to communicate with some your, your customers, for example. The bot can do it. Mm -hmm. And then maybe redirect the conversation to an actual human if required. So we can implement or we can develop chatbots for companies. We also, as, as you mentioned, you know, uh, machine le uh, learning and all these things. 
to make decisions that humans make using machines. Yeah. Where you don't require like a lot of human supervision and human influence. Yeah is what we identify. It could be in healthcare sector, it could be in financial sector. And that's why we put we, we put in our engineers to develop solutions, custom made solutions for these companies. That's how we implement AI for our clients. Now in general, when you talk about you know the future of AI and um, as, a, as a country, where are we going with it and all that, let me tell you in the next five years, five to 10 years, I think AI, you will see AI in every field whether it be education, whether it be technology, whether it be finance or healthcare, everywhere you'll be seeing AI. Actually, you are actually seeing um, um, a lot of AI being used today. Um, if I mention chat GPT, um, a lot of people here might be using it. You might be using it for your work as well, uh, Mr. Vibram. Yeah. I use it like every day, kind of, um, I, 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 I jokingly say that I chat with ChatGPT more than any other human these days. Uh, that's because I use it not just for my work, but for all the other things uh, as well. You know, you, you, uh, you know, it's interesting to note that you said uh, ChatGPT, and yes. you said you use it for a lot of stuff. Yes. Uh, and you were not very specific about it. Can you, can you, <laughs> what, what mischief do you do with ChatGPT? <laughs> So um, I basically see if I if I was a student I would I would have used it to you know do a lot of my homework maybe. Just cheating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know whether there there, there are there maybe students or teachers no. they yes. might not not you know uh, take this in the right way. Uh, but I think there are tools nowadays to make out whether a content is AI generated or not as well. Okay, so teachers also have that kind of thing. Uh, I use it mostly to generate content. Uh, for example, if we need to generate like an article or a blog, I give it like an outline. Yeah. Again, there could be like journalists in the group, uh, in, in, in listening to this, and they might be worried, you know, the jobs are at stake or something. Not really. Um, see, AI can only do so much for you. Uh, you give it certain prompts, and it it it, it gives it, uh, it gives you data. But you cannot use it for you know fact-based kind of um, um, what do you say fact-based work like if you if you ask it certain kind of fact uh, fact-related questions, it can make mistakes. Use it to maybe learn a concept. If you're a student, I I would uh, you know uh, um, advise you that you can use it maybe to learn the concept, maybe to simplify certain things for you. I use it to, as I said, generate content. Um, another thing is, say, um, today I'm, I'm also, you know, going um, to this matrimonial meet that is happening. So I had to, you know, generate my bio data for that. So I asked ChatGPT to do it for me. <laughs> so GPT asked me a few questions like, you know, uh, what are your interests and uh, stuff like that. And I just answered all of its questions and it gave me a very nice sketchy kind of bio data. Hope, hope it, you know, um, hits the mark. <laughs> hits the mark and helps me find a partner. Uh, but, but then, yeah, I use Shared Jeopardy for like a lot of things, like to, you know, identify business opportunities, maybe in tech. Yeah. Uh, ask it questions like, you know, uh, generate a business plan. Identify different, um, uh, what do you say, revenue models. Uh, identify what could be the issues in my business. Perform, say, SWOT analysis, like strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So um, you can use it for almost anything. Changing tracks now, yeah. uh, you also um, have been doing a lot of keynote speeches yes. uh, to different audiences, technical yes. audiences as well as non-technical audiences. Yeah. yeah, I have delivered keynotes on like technical topics like um, you know AI and technology and digital um, you know strategies, etc., etc. But I've also done um, uh, speeches in terms of motivational speaking, in terms of like I'd, I'd, I'd just to speak about my personal experience, right from a sighted person going blind, completing my education, coming back, starting a company, all of that. So I've, I've done motivational speaking sessions based on that. So for me, uh, motivational speaking, um, it's not a very difficult thing because I particularly, uh, I have to basically go and brag about myself. I have to basically talk about myself, what I have done in the past and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. But also deliver some kind of message some kind of, um, uh, what do you say, insight, and some kind of, because um, at the end of the day, you know, it has to inspire people to do something, right, with their own lives. 
to support our work with the blind and visually impaired you can visit the donate page on our website www.scorefoundation.org.in please note www.scorefoundation.org.in Ankur, you talked about your interest in sport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you did play cricket at a representative level. I, I have yeah, when yeah, you were in school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how do you keep in touch with sport? I mean, are you, are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, uh, as a kid growing up in the nineties and a sided kid, right? <laughs> yeah. My first ever idol was Sachin. Yeah. I grew up watching Sachin. That's, yeah. that's I, I consider myself lucky. Yeah, yeah. I was one of those kids. Yeah. Coming from a cricket crazy kind of a, a place, yeah. So I always wanted to play cricket. Um, um, I always uh, like you know uh, played at a very uh, good level. Like I, I was a fast bowler myself. I could bat reasonably well yeah. as well. Yeah. Not as good as Sachin, fortunately. Yeah. Uh, I, I I played in my school and I was good enough to you know go go uh, uh, a level up as well. But decided not to go uh, with that. Decided to pursue with my education. Being a bright kid, I think that that was the thing in the past, right? Cricket was not really a career option. Yeah. Uh, so I studied science and you know uh, kind of uh, lost touch with the game. And after I lost my sight, kind of you know playing was was out of the question. But I do keep in touch. I listen to like commentaries on on TV and listen to commentaries online because TV commentaries really don't work as a blind person. Yeah. It's, 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 you have pictures, right? People can see what's what's happening. So the commentaries are not really descriptive. Yeah, it's more of a supportive. Uh, Correct. Medium, yeah. But as a radio commentary, because there is there is no uh, picture there. Yeah. They are more descriptive. Yeah. So I discovered that you can listen to all of your know uh, this football and um, cricket commentaries online. So there, there's this radio station called Talk Sport, which which presents like a lot of. Uh, uh, Premier League matches. So th there is this Barclays Premier League matches happening like every weekend, right? Yeah. Where Man United play these these games, and they are available on Talksport, and uh, on BBC Sport and other other platforms. There are radio commentaries available. So I keep in touch. I don't miss a single match. I don't miss a single match. Incidentally, uh, yeah. like you, Sachin also started with an aspiration to be a fast bowler. <laughs> true, true, true. And his son is now a fast bowler. Yeah, he is. He plays yeah. for Goa, by the way. Does he? Yeah, he plays for Goa. Okay. So uh, uh, now you obviously listen to commentaries and yes. all that, as your your work also takes a yeah. lot of your time. Yeah. But uh, you also were mentioning that you have a passion for reading. I do. What are the kind of books you read, and who are your favorite authors? Yeah. So reading is something that I've been doing since I was a little kid. Uh, as a kid, I grew up like uh, you know reading Tinkle and Chanda Mama and Sando, but I don't even know whether these. Uh, Know, books exist anymore. Some Something. of them do, yeah. So I think Reader's Digest does, does exist. Uh, Tinkle, I think, does come, but others I don't know. Yeah. But I grew up, uh, you know, reading these kind of uh, uh, books. Today, uh, I am a fan of both fiction as well as non-fiction. Yeah. In fiction, like you know, I I read uh, mostly uh, suspense thrillers. Uh, like my favorite authors are uh, you know Stieg Larsson, the Millennium Trilogy, Girl with yeah. the Dragon Tattoo, and all that. Yeah. Uh, Dan Brown, I've read a lot of Dan Brown, like the Robert Langdon series. Yeah. I've also read, um, you know, adventure books, like uh, fantasy books, like Harry Potter. When I was a little kid, I still read it today. <laughs> uh, people ask me, you're in your early thirties, and you still read Harry Potter. So I, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of that. And as a blind person, I think I mentioned you, you do this when, um, when we were having our chat, that you know, as a blind person, you you listen to a lot of audio books. Yeah. So the narrator also plays an important role in in what kind of books you listen to. So the Harry Potter books I listen to because of Stephen Fry, who's a very good narrator. Right. Yeah. So I've also read like Game of Thrones, which is a popular series, TV series that has come out. I've, I've read all those Game of Thrones books. And in terms of non-fiction, I mostly read business-related books now, like personality development, leadership, and and and. Uh, Business related books. Some of them I would uh, recommend anybody uh, who just is starting out. Maybe Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah. A book that has changed my life uh, completely. I would say the way you look at finances, the way you look at uh, you know money in general. Uh, I mean that book has really changed my life. Yeah. Rich Dad Poor Dad. <laughs> yeah. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Another book I recommend. 
uh, all time best seller of course right and one of the best books you can read uh, if you want uh, to you know use it maybe in your personal life professional life everywhere you can use it if you are into business just want to get started or something personal mba is a very good book which gives you an overview of what a business is what are the different parts of a business yeah. how to grow it and etc etc then never split a difference is a book that uh, teaches you everything about negotiations and stuff so these are some of the books that you know have uh, changed my perspective of life and have actually helped me to make uh, what do you say better decisions as a person and as a, a business owner as well you know as a successful or uh, to be successful uh, entrepreneur a bright student a present companion yeah. have you really had any kind of serious relationships <laughs> um uh i have had in the past um currently i'm a single uh, if there are any single uh, women in 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 the audience yeah take I'm note of that uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh i've had uh you know a lot of relationships in the past i don't know whether i should be speaking about all of this because i have my father sitting in the audience <laughs> um <laughs> but uh, yeah I've, i've had and as a sighted person as a blind person both i've had some some you know pretty good relationships uh bitter sweet memories i have um you know a lot of things which i cannot speak uh, yeah. here because sure. it's, it's a family show right <laughs> but yeah i do have i have a lot of friends as well who help yeah. me out with you know a lot of things like we go to places we go to beaches i i i swim you know um, and then we do Uh, theaters like movies and stuff from time to time i take trips i love traveling as well yeah uh, i've tra- traveled alone as well in the past but but uh, i've traveled mostly with groups with with friends and with family so in terms of relationships yes i, w- I have had like you know pretty good ones and pretty bad ones as well okay uh, we'll yeah. we'll yeah. relieve you of the torture <laughs> there in the yeah. course of uh, what you were talking you slipped by saying that uh, after this conversation hmm. you are going out fishing <laughs> for a partner so uh, uh, we are you going to the matrimonial yeah, yeah, sure. uh, show yes uh, so you have a busy day today but before you go let me ask you a question yes yeah. uh, what exactly do you expect from a marriage oh uh, my god that's like putting me on the spot ah <laughs> uh, first thing first i've never been to a matrimonial meet first so i don't know what to expect maybe yeah. you can guide me there <laughs> or or maybe if there are people in the group who can guide no, me no i found my wife uh, uh, not through a matrimonial okay yeah. <laughs> no but i'm asking you not about the matrimonial show i'm yeah. talking about your expectations sure, sure. from a marriage uh see for me a marriage see since since i'm a you know a cricket fan i would say marriage is more like a partnership yeah a long long partnership 100 run 200 run partnership yeah maybe. yeah so it is where both people i think have respect for each other give each other like uh, you know time and space understand each other and really enhance each other's lives be there for each other when when you know things are, are bad of course there'll be people for you when things are good but when things are bad maybe you know be there just just be there for each other And for me i think relationship is or or marriage is something that has to last first and foremost yeah. i've seen a lot of marriages that do not unfortunately yeah um so i want you know marriage to be a pleasant experience not to be a burden but as i said really enhance each other's lives and you know have a lot of fun along the way so do you cook uh, good i don't <laughs> So that's that's the first, first thing I I got to learn. The first ball that will send you on the back foot. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think uh, we are all hungry now. Yeah. Let me. Uh, uh, there's a bouquet which I would like to give you. Oh, sure. This is uh, made of handmade by children. Uh, can you just extend your hand? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. This is a bouquet. Thank you so much. <laughs> made of pa- paper. Yeah. And this is made by children. Thank you so much. And this is a memento. from uh, the purple um, uh, festival okay yeah? yeah yeah thanks so much thank you so maybe we have a round of applause so thank you very much yeah. for uh, g- coming and uh, spending this time with us ankur and sharing parts of your life yeah and uh, thank you very much thank you thank you i wish you had a
रोशनी का कारवां This podcast was brought to you by Score Foundation. Yeah, Roshni ka karwa.